What's going on, guys? You got Kwasi here for Kwasi Animation Studio, Kwasi Media Network. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, we're going to talk about filming techniques once again. And one of the biggest issues, hold on for a second, I want to correct my mic here. All right. So, one of the biggest issues that I find that uh, occurs is that most people are trying to rush through the process of getting a proper or really decent shot. Okay. So, here we're going to animate the shot the character's already animated we're in the animation tab everything's set up the way that i usually use it so this is my format yours may be different um automatically straight from the jump i am expecting you to have your basic blender knowledge so if you're asking me to do screencast keys or whatnot I, I can't do that on my computer i mean i can but the problem is is it will literally crash every time so i don't want to go down that lane but at the end of the day if you know how to maneuver around in the scene you already know what to do so we're going to automatically begin the animation process on really dealing with the camera. Again, this is more like camera techniques, but we're also going to be looking at depth of field and also understanding how to give a shot that's appealing enough using the pieces that we have. So there will be multiple. So you can have multiple shots of the same shot. So this way now you have more footage to use and you can say, OK, well, I have this shot on this camera, that camera, that camera. So we want two different cameras right now. We have our main camera, which I'm going to just say camera one. So we're just going to call it cam one, right? Okay. And then I'm going to create a second camera. I'm not going to duplicate this one. I'm going to create an entirely new camera. We're going to come out of camera mode. I'm going to click it. And then I'm going to call it cam two. So we're having each camera is going to be set to what is called one. There are different positions up to four most of the time, but we're going to have only, I want to say three positions. So that means in other words is it's going to have three different changes, but it's always going to stay within the frame of those positions so if we go let's set back to one that means we set back to the marker that we set already automatically so that's why we set that first keyframe and we never change it unless we want to switch it up but it has to be between the two positions that we already designated to be those shots that space for the shot okay so uh for the sake of it i want them to all have the same depth so i'm going to go over to the camera right here where it says camera i'm going to go down click here and i'm going to make an uh, ari alexa lf which is one of the standard cameras used in the industry um in the uh normal industry when i say normal industry the one that you used to seeing on a constant basis but anybody that does this is a part of the industry just because they don't have millions of dollars or thousands of dollars budget doesn't mean that they're not a part of this industry already if you animate on any level not create blender scenes not create maya scenes that's not animation that's creating a scene that's like drawing versus actually sitting down and there's motion action and things going on that's animation okay there are actual things happening in the scene so we'll say oh i made a new animation it's just some spinning cube that's an animation simple as that okay so with that being said we have the depth of field set up but now we're going to set up the camera that's alt i'm going to control alt zero and i'm going to set it to my third location which is uh pretty much directly in front so I'm gonna come over here, make sure it's in front, boom, boom. We want this to be on zero. Well, I'm sorry, 180, because it is facing the opposite direction. The Y is upside down for some reason. I don't know why it's upside down, which is weird, because it shouldn't be. Let's go to global. Let's take all this back to zero, go 90. All right, there we go. Okay, so, because the camera was upside down when I did that. All right, so now we're set. Don't forget to save. And now this is our last position. So this will realistically be position three. So this is position one and this is position three. So we want to transition to two. I want my last camera to always be on its one, which is the third position. So I'm not going to move this one. This is locked. This camera is locked. Now that doesn't mean that it won't move. It can move. When I say locked in that position, I'm saying that's the position it's going to be in the way that it's facing. All right. So when we click one here. This camera may switch positions. Now understand this one is on a focal length of 50 millimeters. This one is on a focal length of 35 millimeters. Okay. So we're going to turn on our auto keying and then we we'll come over to uh, object uh, properties and I'm going to I select or I key and input a keyframe. So as he walks, I want it to in so many frames go up to where he's going, like follow him in so many ways. So I'm going to do it again and I'm going to on the Y push it forward, pull it up and straighten it out. So I'm just going to just play with it a little bit because I wanted to kind of be almost like a reveal. So let's look at the playback. All right. All right, cool. So on this first one, I wanted to be down a little bit further to see more of his shoes. 
There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to hit V and go vector. It's the reason why I want to vector this because I don't want any lag on this. So when I get ready to switch over, this one's going to switch to the two position, which you have to decide which side you want to be on. Might it be on the right or might it be on the left? So in this case, I'm going to go to the right. So I'm just going to switch over to it, but let's go to his depth so we can get a good space. So we could be within that camera space and I'm going to pull it down. And again, I'll just sort of come here. All right. Okay. All right. Again, hit a vector. And then as he moves forward, we'll just get him to move towards that position. All right. Okay. Click, click. And I'm again on the Y. But now we're going to have somewhat of a reveal and we're going to have a push in. Okay. So it'll be pushing into that, into the, into that shot, but I want it to slow down. So therefore I, oof, I don't like the way that started. Wait a minute. It's making its way that way, but I think I want this to be a little bit more forward. There we go. All right. So it snaps, boom. So that's more like meeting him up there. Okay. So on this shot right here, because it's, because of the way that it switches, I'll go back to going free on it. Okay. And then I'll hit, um, control E and we're going to do an ease out. Right. So now we're going to switch camera. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to set this camera with control B and then on uh, frame 101, we're going to go to the other camera, which is to the front and we're going to hit control B. Now, remember I said this camera is set. So where it is, is, is he's not situated yet. So you see how it's kind of turned a little. So because that camera, because he's offset a little, we're just going to straighten it up. So it looks like it's straight. Boom. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and set keys. And because the animation is just going to play an idle, we'll just go up to like 90 frames. All right. So just make this 190. I'm going to click it and I'm going to slowly ease into him. And again, we're going to pull up just a little, not a whole lot. Cause it's like one of those things where it's like, we want to try to be epic, but in this case, because of the way it's set up, I don't want it to slow down. So we're going to hit vector it. It's like doing, it's like doing a linear hit T and you go linear, but I still can continue to, to I can still break the curve. Okay. All right. So now for that hand, that hand kind of motion, what I'll do is, is I'll bring this down a little. All right. We're going to click everything in key, go to modifiers, noise, and then I'm going to put in like 15, but on the strength, like 0 0.008. I want it to be very subtle. And then up here, we're going to hit copy. Oops. Let's delete that. I already copied it. It's fine. All right. So now I'm going to go over to, cause it need to be on rotation on the Y and rotation on the X. All right. So now when we play it back, let me come over here, come in, slide forward, close all this up. All right. Okay. So I'll do the same thing over here that I did over there. All right. Now when we slide, when we go forward, we should see it. It's like, he's just thinking. <laughs> like yeah and this could be like an intro for something or whatnot like you just want to just kind of give that feeling like now what i was thinking is is on a switch up so right here as he's walking because he starts to stop right about there we'll switch this to here so it's on the 40 it'll switch to the other one now let's see how that playback looks okay so that switch where it switches like right here as it gets to him I kind of want to switch right here. So let's say about 85, we'll switch over. Sort of click there and we'll switch there, but also means I have to go to get these camera keys, just the first one and push it to 85. All right. Now, again, this is about finding that shot that you want. Dobbin's life. Okay. So the character you're looking at right here is the remade version of Dobbin. Okay. The set that you're seeing is the, um, set for Amelia's airship. If you know anything about it, I know if you own this channel, you probably don't really go over to the other channel, the network channel, the quasi media network channel, check it out. I'll, there should be a link in the description. Okay. So when we look at the first one, we want to check out and make sure our depth is good. So we're going to go ahead and click this. Let's hope everything works. Okay. Um, I'll check depth in here now. So I know that the depth is set. All right. So we can clearly see that the depth is working. What is blocking the camera that hard? 
I mean the light oh that's his head <laughs> well because he's pretty tall to be honest um that light was our main light is it a point light yeah I need to turn it into an area light bring it down Ooh, hold on wait a minute let me go to the layout fix this light Oh, it's low. Oh, it's low. Hold on. Let's pull it up. All right. Let me expand it to about one. And we should be good now. Yeah, we're good now. All right, cool. I can go back over here to that. Okay, so there we have it. Yeah, because he's pretty tall and I have this sort of low. So there you go. All right, so now we come back over to animation. We know that that last one doesn't have that, that that feeling on it, right? So if I come over to the second one, I want to do the same thing again. I can paste it, and on the X, I can paste it, and then let's look at our playback. And it has just a little bit of movement in it, as you can see. So even if we come back to playback, and I just show it in the render view, I mean the solid view, right? It's the same thing. Okay, so we go back to one on it. And let's go to the render view. So you still get that little bit of movement. All right. Okay. So I think this is, should be on. Yes, on frame dropping. All right. So if I go back over to animation. All right. So those, this is what I'm saying in reference to setting up your scene. Having a simple scene, knowing the direction you want to take. The animation is already on the character. So I don't have to go in and try to fix the animation to fit the, or match the camera actions. The animation is already there and I decide what actions I want on the camera because the animation is already set. So basically what it is, is, is my character comes into view of my camera shot. So I find that most people are not doing this. They're just going, well, let me put the camera here because I want this to be seen. I'm like, yeah, but some of it needs to kind of be off in the distance or offset. Um, uh, you'll see uh, probably the next video where I do the behind the scenes for a short I just did called uh, First Warrior Wyatt in a Secret Place. So even in that short, there's those shot decisions are made based on getting you to, to create a feeling. OK, so here we see that we're basically saying, hey, look, I'm that guy. Watch me. He's coming in a place like I'm that guy like this is welcome to Dobbin's life or whatever. Right. So. You see him walking into a million's airship because there's his buddy or whatnot. And he said, hey, can I use your airship to create an intro? <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, this, these are the things that I'm saying, guys, think that far on. Don't get stuck on, oh, I want it to look this way. Well, the way you may want it to look, have you scaled that shot out? Do a mock-up scene. This this set is this is official set. So this set is set. OK, but if you just want to do a mock-up scene where you just have like just some images or i mean not images just some primitives on the screen like some cubes that represent buildings a plane that represents a sidewalk or a street and you just can mock up your shots so now when you replace each building with the one that you want now you have your shot laid out and then you can drop your character in there for the animation because you already know they're gonna you want to see a top shot from them running down the street trying to get away from the the pursuer or whatever so it's it's one of those things where you have to think that far and I always say um, digital is fine, but go to a place like, you know, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, something like that, or whatever dollar version you have near you and get you a lot of composition notebooks or one subject notepads and just make like a whole breakdown of how you want each shot to look. Um, I know people talk about storyboarding, but that's just a different way to storyboard. That's how I storyboard. I write down each scene the way I want it to be because sometimes because storyboarding is more about drawing it out when that takes more time to me than I really want to do because I give myself a, a time frame. It's like I want to have this out by Friday. So if I want something out by Friday that I know it's going to be a accumulation of like 30 different shots for two scenes. I, I don't have time to sit there drawing that out for a week when I just need to get it on screen. So the best thing to do is to write down, okay, shot, scene one, shot one. These are the things we're gonna see on screen, but there needs to be a smooth transition in the shot too. So I write these things down. So this is the stuff I'm saying, uh, make all attempts to do guys. So with that being said, man, I don't wanna beat it up too much longer. I want you guys to um, get to work. Check out every video on the, on the channel, including the one where I do the Grim Dawn, uh, Magi of the Tail IE uh, short because I go through the entire process of building that scene and the characters in their clothes. So it's like, even though that, that I've, I've come way further than that video, 
it's just a good video to check out to see the struggles you may come into and then later on i do another one where you see me build another scene i have one where i'm building a set for uh something i didn't even do um i have another set where i'm building a runway uh it's just doing those things and practicing those things show you and teach you things that you may use later on so people try to shrug it up oh i want to know how to do this with goku and I, that's cool but if you don't understand the principles of how to maneuver in the viewport or if you don't get the maneuver the, the principles of the fundamentals and the foundation of how camera work will help you sell what you're trying to sell on screen you're just really just kicking yourself in the butt because i did it early on because i was being lazy i knew the techniques and didn't do them i knew what i should have done and didn't do it so why not go do the same thing why would you i'm giving you the cheat sheet so just take the sheet and run with it don't don't get stuck on trying to do this one thing when you haven't even figured out how to th do the thing to get to that so with that being said man i hope that you guys learned something today and nothing but love